Joseph? I, I... A foolish, unrealizable dream. But I must face the world. Look for employment. Vicky, Vicky, don't. I... I... What is it, Joseph? Do you care? Do I care? Why, when I, when I think of you without a home, I, I... I'm completely a man, a man. I... Uh, uh. Becky! Becky, I have news to tell you. This wonderful news. George, I had asked for your hand and you've accepted him. Oh, my little budging bride. You're happy. Becky, you'll never know how happy you're not in love. Oh, perhaps I am. Perhaps I too have given my heart. And you never told me about it. We wanted to surprise you. Joseph is so shy, so cute. Oh, Joseph. Oh, Becky, you poor, poor girl. Poor? Is Joseph so undesirable a match? Oh, then it must be I. My father would never approve of... I know any. I understand. I've reached above my station. I've no fine pedigree. Oh, stop, Becky. Father has ambitions for Joseph. He, he plans to send him to India on government service. Wise, father. Well, don't we, precious. I'll marry one of these days. Some worthy tradesman. A draper, a greengrocer, someone humble, fit for my position. Present my compliments to your father and say that I'm leaving tonight. And good luck to Joseph, the civil servant. The government needs men of courage, decision, men of brains. Uh. Still, I should like to accept. 
These dear little children have completely won my heart. Oh, you'll live to regret it. But I'm glad. My name is Becky, darling. Would you like me to read you a pretty story? No. <laughs> and here I bring you The Blind Washerwoman of Moorfield, a moral and instructive volume. Mr. Pitt, you're kind, you said, but I haven't yet finished the rump legacy that you brought me last week. Read them both, then. Read them both. Works by pious authors are soothing to the soul. <laughs> What was that about the soul, Fitz? Let me hear it, too. You know how your sermons always affect me. You are too far sunk in the morass of iniquity, my beloved brother, for my sermon. <laughs> I hope to see you later, Miss Rebecca. Uh, now I must work on my speech for the Questionable Aid Society. <laughs> questionable Aid Society. How on earth do you stand him, Becky? What choice have I? I must watch the side my bread is buttered on. Why eat bread with that little mouth was made for cake and kisses? And of the two, you would willingly supply the second. Oh, not enough. Not half so nourishing as bread. On the contrary. Every kiss counts, Becky. <laughs> I'm returning to London tomorrow. Regimental duty. London's such a large town. So many willing lips to please a soldier. Yeah, but none like yours. <laughs> Becky, these pretty little hands, who will hold them when I'm gone? Well, they'll be very busy. Washing violet and combing rose and mending Sir Pitt's shirt. Oh, not that you shouldn't be doing all that. Becky, if I were to ask you to come to oh. London, to find a position for yourself. I've tried all that. No Queen's Crawley is my haven. Oh, but there must be something. Some... Becky, wait. I have an aunt in London. Young and pretty, of course. No old and a spinster, but rich. I can persuade her that she shouldn't stay alone. That she needs a companion. And I need a protector, Rose. Becky! Becky Sharp! Can't you hear me? Where is that girl? Sharp! 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 Miss Crawley, ma'am, are you perhaps calling Miss Sharp, ma'am? No! I'm calling on heaven to help me preserve me calm. Where are my drops? Where's my jelly? Am I to sit here and be murdered with inattention? Where in blazes is that Miss Begotten girl? Miss Crawley, ma'am, if I may venture the opinion, ma'am, the shop has left the house, ma'am. Probably on some dark, amorous errand. Some dark, amorous errand, eh? <laughs> I wouldn't put it past that. Oh, I've been watching her for weeks. A smile for the butcher and a smile for the baker. That girl hasn't a principle to bless herself with. Mm. <laughs> That's what I like about her. Yeah. What are those weeds doing here? You know how vegetation nauseates me. But these were brought by your nephew, ma'am. Captain Crawley. They're a cozy nosegay. Throw it out. And throw my nephew out, too. What the devil is he doing around here every single day? Well, that's not hard to guess, ma'am. Miss Sharp has a way of blinking and a way of winking, Bert. Are you suggesting that my nephew would as much as notice that girl? How dare you? Show him in. And get Miss Sharp for me. Go to her room. Get her. Don't you come back here without her. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my head, my head. I know I shall get the vapors. Crawley is awaiting you, sir. Dear Aunt Julia. Well, sir, to what am I indebted for the questionable honor of this visit? To the affection of a devoted nephew. And do devoted nephews always get themselves oiled and bothered to call in their maiden aunt? Huh? <laughs> or did you hope to find Becky Sharp at home? Answer me. Becky, eh? No, I'll not have you so much as look at Becky. Remember that. Why, that girl will twist you round her little finger. Yes, but Aunt Julia, I assure you... Don't assure me, sir, I assure you. I've been indulgent, I've been generous, I've paid your card debts, and I've laughed at your extravagance. But I'll not have you ensnared by any calculated little snip of a menial. The woman you marry must be a lady, and a lady of quality. Oh, oh, oh. How dare you come bounding into the room like this? Oh, just as I knowed. Miss Sharp's not in her room. She's not in the house. There isn't a stitch of clothing in the closet. And there's a trunk all packed. Trunk? Packed? Well, where is it? Me? Yeah. Instantly. Well, well, well. You expect me to go for it myself? Hurry. Hurry. Well, who is it now? Am I never to have any peace? 
Right, Randy, down. Out in the streets of Rainbow Leeds only. Give it to me. 